Ciao, Sergio Cocchi here. I write and produce my songs, I sing and I play keyboards. I'm talking to you from Milan, Italy, where I'm currently based and where I was born. I always love to read the liner notes of an album, especially when they were printed on a vinyl and they were actually readable. So, as my singles and EPs are only coming out in the digital world for the moment, I decided to do a spoken version of the liner notes to offer a little bit of context. I was influenced at first by many blues, rock, jazz and rhythm and blues artists. I learned the blues scale way before the major and minor ones. When I was 12 and I heard my cousin play that scale on the piano, I told him, what's that? I want to learn that. That's cool. Then I moved to Los Angeles when I was 20 to study Musicians Institute, and there I dove deeply into the sound of James Brown, Sly and the Family Stone and Prince. Now I'm mixing all these influences in what I call a soulful funk rock pop experience. After more than 25 years as a keyboard player, vocalist, producer, author and featured artist on many projects, I decided it was about time I step out on my own with a solo project of original material. The Samba Chronicles, as all the things we can see and touch in this reality, actually started with a dream. In that dream, my friend Malik was showing me this beautiful vinyl he had recorded with a cover that would show him as a child and then as an adult when you moved it. I told him, Malik, I didn't know you were working on the record. What he said, I'll never forget. He said, it might be the only record I will make, so I decided that if I was going to leave something behind, it better be beautiful in all of its aspects. When I woke up, I was excited and ignited, and shortly after that dream, I went to New York City for the first time. I stayed there for 40 days by myself, and basically explored the city, went to all the great concerts I could go to, went to open mics, and sat in with friends at their gigs. But mostly, I did one thing. I wrote as many songs as possible. These songs became the foundation of my project. The Samba Chronicles is a concept project where I publish a song every six weeks. After a series of four songs, a thematic EP will be released, including those four songs and some alternate versions. A total of six EPs will be released. The first EP is an introduction to the project, where the four tracks cover all the four themes of the EPs, which are, in order, loving, connecting, transmuting and awakening. Then, I'll release an outro EP to wrap it all up. This work is the result of recording sessions that started in June 2016, after I got back from New York, and went on until June 2018. For two years, with my rhythm section, we had a monthly session and recorded a total of 88 tracks. Some were complete songs, or some are being reworked or completed right now, and some were actually dumped. As many authors know, Songs that are kept in the drawer for too long can take too much dust or get rusty, and even become obsolete for the writer himself. Hence the idea of releasing singles every six weeks and group them in thematic EPs. At the end of the cycle, the idea is to make that original dream come true, and to group all the songs in a special limited edition package, a set of three vinyls or two CDs. Just like Stax, Motown, Atlantic or High Records used to do, the tracks were recorded taking advantage of the latest recording technology, but basically, we recorded the good old way. A tight rhythm section, playing together in a room, with me on keys and vocals in the control room. Real musicians together in a room is still my favorite way to record. I think I would go crazy after a while in front of a screen all by myself. But hey, different strokes for different folks. The naked versions of the songs are a piano vocal affair, recorded on my old, beloved, upright piano. And I believe they reveal the essence of the songs themselves. Basically, that's how I started and how I wrote these songs. In a room, by myself, with a piano and my voice. That's it. The four songs on this second EP represent different aspects of that energy called love. 
through many different styles. Loving is such a timeless, shapeless, sometimes even abused theme, and yet it is so real and central in all of our lives. I truly believe that it can move and remove. It is the cure. Yes, it may sound corny and way too simple, I know, but just imagine that energy you have when you're in love applied to yourself, all kinds of beings, relationships, and daily issues. It would be, and it is, an unstoppable force. Let's get to the songs. Rising Love is a sonic trip, enhanced by the contributions of two special guests, two very dear friends of mine, Pepe Aragonese and Alex Pacho Rossi, former collaborators in Found Action and other projects. Pepe's trumpet creates an atmosphere reminiscent of Seal's Carves, rustling in the wind, while Bacho's percussions and colors remind me that to fly, we need a land to take off from, or, and, a water to emerge from. In order to rise in love, we fell in love lots of times. We got discouraged, felt all sorts of bad things, but we always got back up, ready to love a little bit more and ready to try and avoid those mistakes we have repeated so many times. I See You is inspired by the soul funk tracks of the 70s, with the horn section and the tenor sax solos by Michele Monistiroli, which is our special guest, that act as a counterpoint to the lead and backing vocals. Bass and clavinet play the main riff of the song, and the wah guitar completes the groove along with the drums, in the tracks that travels carefree between the Bee Gees style vocals of the chorus especially and the atmospheres that are attributed to one of my favorite songs I Get Lifted by George McRae. Never Ending Dance is a slow jam propelled by a classic soul groove with the guitar that dances around the vocals. Lyrically here, the focus is more on self-love and acceptance than anything else. The Rhodes electric piano is the glue that binds it all together, and all the other instruments create an atmosphere around the vocal. While Frank Zappa's aficionados will recognize the sleep dirt guitar inspiration style, the groove might as well come from all those repeated listenings of Isaac Kay's version of Walk On By, the Bacharach classic. Now That I Got You is a power ballad, and from the opening trap vocals, its stylistic influence can be very easily recognized. Prince's body work had a great impact on my music, and that can clearly be felt and heard here. Think of Diamonds and Pearls as an example. This is a song that closes a circle, celebrating the magic of the encounter with that special one and with another special guest, Daniele Comoglio on the soprano sax, that blows on the fire so that, as the song goes, all the sparkles turn into flames. Wow. Thank you for your time the most precious and equalizing gift we have in the world. I really hope you will enjoy listening to this EP. And if you like it, share it, add it to your playlists, reach out on socials, comment. And always remember, feedback can make an independent artist thrive. Talking about independent artists, I'm publishing this work with a small indie label here in Milan, Groovit. And I'm also part of the Escape Arc family that is on a mission to build the biggest and fairest music company in the world and in the process create a brand new music industry where artists don't just survive, but they thrive. Once again, I want to thank you. I wish you all the best wherever you are. Ciao.